Hello, we're back once again for another video tutorial, this time the Soviet Su-100. Uh, I've started this with a black primer undercoat and then airbrushed in Russian green. Uh, however, you can also use the, uh, it'd probably be a lot easier to use the Soviet armor war paint. All right, after that, uh, first step here that you're seeing in the video is uh, we're using German gray. Take care of the tracks, the road wheels there and the metal cable tie downs on the uh, on the unditching log there. I'm a big fan of using German gray, I'm sure you've already noticed. Um, I just think that using black and dry brushing uh, a metallic paint over it, to me at this scale, it just doesn't quite look right. Um, everyone's got their personal personal choices here, but I definitely think that German gray, you can't go wrong with this. For any nation, really, for their tracks. I'm not going to show you the entire thing uh, doing this. I'm sure you get the idea right here. But yeah, we're painting the. Once we get the inside here, go through, and there we go. Starting to get those road wheels. And this, by the way, um, this tutorial here really is good for T-34s as well. All right, we skipped a little bit. Um, now we're seeing here I'm painting the uh, German gray on the where the metal cables are holding the tent, the log onto the tank. Um, don't worry if you splash a little bit in the log. That's okay. We'll take care of it later. Okay. Yeah, so fast forward after we finish the German gray. Now we're going to paint gloss varnish directly on the sites where we're going to apply decals. Uh, in this case, we're just going to put a vehicle number on there, very similar to the ones that you see painted on the box cover. The gloss varnish is going to make the surface really smooth and help us prevent silvering and making our decal look horrible. Now, I opted, rather than go for the brown, you know, wood logs that you see people paint all the time, is to try to go for an, a finish that maybe is a bit more on a realistic or normal and and uh, I played with a few color combinations and finally came up with this uh, two parts medium sea gray to one part khaki gray um, I know it looks a little bright right here but you'll see later it'll darken up a little bit and we'll put a wash on it but this color to me looks like a lot of the trees that uh, you know, I, I, that I've seen walking around um, kind of a grayish with brown tinges uh, bark on it uh, not too often I actually see a tree where it's this bright you know, medium brown uh, wood on there. Uh, you be the judge when you get to the end of this, but I just wanted to try something a little bit different, so I, I played around with a few color combinations of grays and khakis and browns until I found a finish that uh, that uh, I dig. I hope you like it. We'll see when we get to the end there. We're going to do a, uh, a shade on this. It's going to darken it up a little bit and give some uh, uh, give some relief because the the sculpting on this is actually really nice. You even get like bark texture and, and places a couple, a couple spots where the bark's falling off. It actually looks really, really nice. And I think for the overall appearance of this uh, SU-100, you'll be really doing yourself a favor if you take the time to uh, paint, you know, the add-on stuff, the bags, the helmets, and the unditching log here. I'm going to grab a smaller brush here and just get this this little bit of, uh, of log that's kind of in between these two tie downs right there. Okay, now we're switching over to um, painting uh, a lighter, a much lighter color you can see here on the exposed area where uh, the wood was where the wood was cut, you know, where the bark was is cut away. So the, I guess the flesh, you want to call it, um, is much, much lighter. So I'm going for that for some, some contrast with the pale sand. Okay, now that our gloss varnish is dry, we're going to go ahead and get uh, get our decals on here. These come with the box set. Now, you'll notice there are actually four-digit numbers on there, but, of course, nothing stopping you from taking a razor and just cutting two numbers off. 
Uh, so use water, you know, push it around until you got it where you want it. I took a, a little paper towel here and wicked away the excess uh, water I had in there to help me push that that 20 around. Um, after the, the both decals on, on the both sides are dry, you see I skipped the other one, uh, paint another layer of gloss varnish on there, okay? It's going to help protect it and, again, help prevent that, that silvering effect, all right? Uh, next, we're going to paint uh, beige brown on this tool handle here, uh, both handles. Nice color, good contrast. It's a great one to use for any tool handles in your vehicles, plus a lot of times most of your the furniture on you know, rifles, small arms with wood furniture. I forgot to actually paint the uh, this tool here earlier when I had my German Grey out, so I went ahead and cracked it out again and, uh, and painted this up real quick. All right, now the exhaust in the back, uh, we're kind of going to go for a little rust effect. always looks cool. Again, a little bit more contrast, so paint just a little bit of cavalry brown on both of them. Don't worry if it looks a little bright right now. We're going to go back later and put some black pigment on it and uh, a little bit of pencil, and it'll look nice, nice and sooty and grimy. Okay, now we're hitting it with the sponge. Uh, we're taking a piece of sponge from the box set, uh, getting a little bit of uh, German gray paint on there, and basically just uh, dabbing it all around to show chips in the paint. So try to focus on areas that are going to see that kind of damage. Uh, fenders are a good one, crew hatches, uh, sharp edges, you know, anywhere where you'd suspect uh, an armored vehicle would uh, get uh, damaged. Okay, as I promised before, now we're going to hit the uh, log and give it some some uh, some more detail, kind of bring out that, that bark detail and darken it a bit. Uh, it's a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one mix, uh, gloss varnish, brown shade, and black shade. Um, the reason I didn't mix it with water is I wanted the gloss varnish to kind of help uh, the capillary action of the shades get in there and, and define that bark as much as possible and to help not darken it too much. Um, and I think we, we largely achieved that with this here. get a little bit on the ends, but try not to get too much. Then give the whole thing a matte varnish after that's dry. All right, now we're doing our pigments. Like I said before, uh, Na Vallejo Natural Iron Oxide right there in the back, so uh, make sure you get it on the end of the exhaust there, as well as on the, the hull of the vehicle itself right there, you know, where the, the exhaust from it's kind of building up, you know, the soot and everything. That looks quite nice, and it's very realistic using, using pigments like this. You could also use your airbrush with some matte black if you've got a nice, you know, if you've got a dual action airbrush that you have a lot of control over that. Uh, that looks good too. So, either way. All right, you can uh, pick all kinds of colors you want to use for your road dust and dirt and grime and everything. This time I just want to try something different. So, you went for dark yellow ochre, uh, again from Vallejo. Um, make sure you get a really good amount of it uh, on the tracks, road wheels, that sort of thing. And keep in mind, um, that when you apply your second matte varnish to seal all this pigment down so it doesn't just get everywhere and make a mess, it will darken up a bit. It will get a lot more muted. Um, so, you know, if this isn't your kind of thing and you're worried that your tank looks like somebody just dumped a, a bucket of sand on it, um, it's, it's not going to look like that once we get to our, our matte varnish stage. Make sure you get plenty in the tracks there, definitely. Try to get some, a uh, couple of random spots on the hull, and try to get a bit on the decals as well. Because sort of the paint chips, you know, uh, dust, things like that on the decals, maybe even a wash. Um, that really helps sort of bring the paint job of the tank, the green of the tank, and the decal together. So it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, a sticker that you put on after you painted the tank. You want the two to really look like they belong together and not two separate components, which unfortunately sometimes you'll see, because I know a lot of guys out there the decals will be the last thing they do. And you got this like beautifully painted tank, kind of grungy, kind of dirty, a little bit of battle damage, and then perfectly pristine decals. Um, you want to avoid that. Get the decals on there early and let them take advantage of all this awesome uh, dirt and filth and grunge you're putting on there. It looks cool. Now, I forgot to do the uh, end of the gun barrel earlier when I was using my uh, my black pigment, so here we go. It looks cool, you know, build up a soot for multiple gun firings. I pretty much do it all the time. Then seal all that pigment in with a matte varnish again. And finally, our last step, 
is the humble number two pencil. Uh, if you've watched my uh, already my Panzer 470 video, you'll know that I'm a big fan of uh, of the pencil. It makes a very realistic uh, effect for paint chips, exposed metal, all that sort of thing. Again, focus on areas that you're going to see, you know, hatch edges. Um, if your vehicles have like damaged fenders, uh, sharp edges, anywhere like that, wherever you sponged on the German gray earlier, where the paint's chipped off, that would be a really good place to visit with this uh, with this pencil. Um, make sure you get those uh, those cables, those tie-down cables, those metal cables. Yeah, just like that. And then once you're happy with all the battle damage, just use your use your pencil to. Uh, to, to show the exposed metal on the tracks, because really most of the track, I mean, if you go out and look at a, you know, bulldozer or something like that, it doesn't, it's not the shiny metallic tracks at all, you know, the, the metal kind of pokes through here and there, but it's mostly kind of dusty and dirty, um, and that's kind of the effect I'm, you know, that's the effect I'm going for when I'm, when I'm using the pencils here, uh, but if you like it a little brighter, you know, by all means, you could uh, dry brush it, you know, with something like gunmetal, uh, would work fine, personal preference. And make sure you do this after the matte varnish so it doesn't get dulled down. Otherwise, you know, it won't look as nice as it could. Get a little bit on the uh, gun barrel end there. Check a couple spots here. Make sure we're good. And that's it. Here's the 360. It's all done. Use that techniques, and you'll get this box set painted in no time. All right. Here's the recipe. If you're interested in painting this yourself, hey, everything's right here. Pause the video if you need to write it down. Thanks a lot for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, be sure to turn in for more tank painting videos from Battlefront Miniatures and FlamesWar.com.